In this video, we're going to focus on a viewer's question, which is how to make a progressive line chart in Chart.js. So with Chart.js, you can make a progressive line chart, which is quite interesting. And let me show you, first of all, the viewer here. This is one of my other videos about how to shorten long data labels on the y-axis in Chart.js. And in here, I had a question from Arnab. So a special thank you for Arnab. And this is the following he said. Sir, the Udemy course is really nice. So first of all, thank you for joining my Udemy course. And uh, the following, but as they introduce the config setup in Chart.js examples, I'm unable to understand the use. Could you please show us any example of how to use it for line chart and progressive chart, please? All right, so to understand this, we need to get the example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you exactly how I look at an example in Chart.js and we will get the specific example, which is the progressive line chart. So let's start and explore. First of all, what I do want is here, I will just make a very simple bar chart here because that will be our default comparison. So in here, we just go to getting started and just a quick note, Chart.js has updated again to the latest version, which is 3.4.0, which is quite nice. So there's probably some more explanation and documentation in here, but not everything so first of all just copy all of this basics here and paste this in there and then after that i will get the getting started get the link and then grab that put it in here as well just below here all right so i'm going to give this a proper indentation and then next just put this canvas in a nested div just to ensure that the uh, width of the chart will not be expanding into infinity so we say here class and just give the chart box class chart box class and here style and then we say here class chart box and then we say here with 700 pixels all right so now we have this here we have a chart everything nothing fancy so let's look at the progressive uh, line chart so in here probably you can find it somewhere here in the configuration you need to go to animations and let's see if they have anything here do we see anything here the progressive no i don't see much here so what we can do is we can just search for it if you will search for it you will go to the examples or the samples here so we just click on samples we go here to animation and then we can see here the progressive line so this is the progressive line which is absolutely phenomenal However, if you look at down here, you might struggle to understand what's going on here. And the reason why you struggle is here is the example here is not created in plain JavaScript like what we are used to here. And this is really a pity. I would highly recommend the documentation to have it in plain JavaScript first, because what they have here is they set it here in probably in uh, Vue.js or maybe in React.js, in one, one or the other. But if I'm not mistaken, I think this is made in Vue.press. So probably this is written in Vue.js. However, let's start and explore here. The first thing what I want to do here is we can just grab all of this. And this is how I look at it because this is the biggest problem with most documentations. The documentation is usually written by an expert who is very deeply into the code. Plus they are a programmer or a website developer and they think in dry meaning that dry means do not repeat yourself so this is extremely tough to read and this is what i always have experienced myself if it's documentation they're hard to read and here as well this is very dry you see all of this this information there's no explanation at all assuming that you probably understand this and here's the problem the code is written in a way that is not beginners friendly while a documentation is meant to be written for a beginner. So that's very counterintuitive. And the reason why is the programmer who writes this probably is so into the code that he understands or he or she understands it completely and cannot see it from a beginner's perspective. So, well, that's a small problem, but of course I'm going to cover this. So we're going to solve that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these three because the config, the, MNA, the animation and data are not separate parts and, and this is the biggest problem you will see all of this code you don't understand exactly what's going on here because the documentation doesn't cover it so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put it all down here we're just going to add up here everything and I'm just going to put in here a comment 
say this is the uh, documentation text. All right, so we have this here. Then we get the animation. We're going to grab that all. We just grab them every one, one by one. And if you put in here, you see this. And finally, here you have the data. Let's grab that as well. All right. So once we have that, what we need to do is we need to learn to dissect the parts and put them into the right order of playing JavaScript. And if you would go here to GitHub, if you click on this, you go to the GitHub first, and you can see here it has your block one or two. This is the block data, and then you have the animation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they have all these blocks exactly the same, and it looks far more organized. I'll give you that. However, for a beginner, it is hard to understand. I would prefer more a default version we just grab and paste it and after that you can just figure it out all right but sadly enough not possible so what we're going to do now is of course if we would save this this will not work at all does it give you an error why because we the entire code is not ready so what we're going to do here now is start to dissect it so we have this code here and this is oh sorry we have here this code and this is our starting point because this is the one that we can copy paste and you get immediately a bar chart so from here on, well, we can convert this to a line chart, but we just look at this part here. And if you really look carefully, you start to see certain parts matching. All right. So you can see here, this is the config. And in the config, you can see type line. So here's a hint. This is basically your config. And then here, type bar. So you get now the understanding of this part. You see data and data sets. And then you get that here as well, data and labels and data sets. So this is probably all matching together. And if we look at it, it closes here until the options, so it covers as well the options here. So meaning we have the options as well. So we could just basically copy this part, except for the last one. You skip this. Why? This one is matched with the config. I don't want to touch that. That's that is basically our biggest biggest issue. So just only between here. Let's co copy that, and then we just paste it in here. And do not overwrite this one because we just only want to go here between. You just paste all of this together. Now we have this. All right, let's give it a proper indentation. There we are. So now you have the line, the data, and you see here the, the utilities. I highly recommend you not to use utilities. The reason why this is designed specifically for the documentation of Chart.js, which in case I don't recommend as well to use. Why? Because it's indicated it might change as well, and there is no solid understanding or explanation really for this. Um, if you're a beginner, you will not understand. I have a hard time to really understand this. They have some explanation on it, but also there is no value in using this because probably you have no understanding of how it's built. Secondly, they might change this because it's only for the example. So let's remove this and just put in here red. There's no value from that, and just put this in blue. But of course, this must be a string. So we're going to put in here a string version all right so we have this here and then you can see here data knowing how to read the chart.js code is beneficial for you in the long term because now you can see maybe what is wrong and what or what is basically missing or added up here what, what we still need you can see your data this is a variable this is not a solid number all right and it needs to be a variable because if you see the formula eventually down here you will see that there's a lot of data points in there so we have this, we can delete now this part here. Let's delete all of this except for the documentation text. Comment, we just leave that here. All right, so now we have this part here. So what do we know here? Well, let's look at this. Here, we have a few items that we need to know. We see here the animation, and this is going to be very important. I'm going to cover this as well. And we have here this data. If you look at this, you will know that this value here, this constant or variable, can never be somewhere down. We cannot say here constant data equals ABC or whatever. Why? Because if we read this first and then it says it says here an error, when it reads this line error, I don't see this constant or this variable or this uh, let value. So you already know with data that here, that this part here, we need to move this up. So you can see here, and I, see, I realize that we have this even duplicated, sorry, so I can just delete this. This duplication is no needed. So just copy this or cut that out, put it here up. So we need to assign the data first before we can even read the data variable. It's very straightforward. And here basically, what is it? This is a empty array 
And we also have another data array MD2. Why? Because there are two progressive lines here. And what happens is it will make automatically 1,000 data points. Yes. So we don't have it hard coded. It's just automatically through a formula. And this is the formula. It starts here and it says here let 100, or sorry, this one here first. First value is 100. Why? Because we didn't assign here, but it must start here at some beginning point. So the very first data point is 100. The next one is 80 here. So you can see your previous 80. And then after that, it will start to run through this here. It makes a loop, a for loop. And then here, it will get the previous number, which is 100, if there is none. And after that, it will start to do a certain formula. Here, you can see here what it does. X would be the I or the loop value or the iteration. And this will be the previous. It will be this. And then it will do certain things. And after that, it will run through some more codes. Let's look at that. Uh, let's go at the next part here, which is this one here. So here we have the duration, the constant, and the other formulas here. So I'm going to remove this ABC. We don't need this. But this here must be used as well. So we're going to cut this out. We're going to move this up here. Let's see where we need to put it. Probably here. Yes. And the reason why we do this here is we will have the duration. Because this part here, the duration and the other values, will be matching with this here. Between points has been as a uh, is also a constant or a let value and the duration here is also a variable. So these two are variables. Here is as well a variable. But here you can see here we have the X. And here we have animation. Alright. So what we're going to do here is you can see this here animation here. And I'm going to just open up this one here. And this is basically this part here. You can see what they really did was they make this a constant and then we re they refer to it. But I want to just cut it out. What we're going to do here in the animation, curly brackets, and between here, before I need to put in a comma here, make sure you have a comma there. And then grab all of these points here. And we have to make sure it's until the Y value. All right. Cut this out. And let's put this on the animation. And then we give this a proper indentation as well. Where is it here? All right, then we have a tap, tap, tap. All right, or indent, sorry. And then here, make sure you have the comma. All right, so this works here now. So we get these points here. We have this all together. And now you can double check if this works as expected. I'm going to go all of this here. We, we use all of the codes. Save that. Go back here and refresh. All right, so now we get our own code here as well. So this is beautiful. So if you look at it, it does exactly the same. And this is basically the way how I look at code. And this is how you should work as well. I will be making videos in React in the near future. I'm learning React as well. And then I will cover it basically with how you can do it similar to what they're doing. Probably they use Vue.js, so maybe I need to learn Vue.js as well for that. It will be one or the other. However, this is the most important one. And what we really did here is just understanding. And this is what I recommend you understand how to read here. So for example, here you can see the constant was a duration, all right, total duration. And where we have the total duration, well, we have to double check, is there any value in here? Oh, all right, you see here, this was the constant matching in here, use the duration, then between points will be the duration time divided by the data length. Data length will be this here, basically, the data we have here, and remember, when we loop through this, there are 1,000 data points in here. If it loops 1,000 times, so data length is 1,000. Data length 2 is 1,000 as well, straightforward. So that's why they only use one time this. It will be more than enough. And this is basically how we do it. And you can see here the delay, the delay between points is a variable. And this variable equals this one here, which is a formula. And then here, this is as well. This is a quite interesting one as well. Here they use an index of the CTX, the context, basically. Uh, it starts with zero. Yes, if it's equals zero, basically it's an if statement. If CTX equals zero, and I'm surprised it even works like this because we didn't even push this here up. So I was personally surprised on that, but apparently ChartJS is flexible enough to understand this. And then it says here, if the index is zero, then we get the pixel value of 100, which makes sense. That's basically on the previous here or basically here the starting point, together with the previous. And then what it does afterwards is start to loop through it, or, and if that's not the case, so if it's not the index zero, index zero is basically the first index point, basically at the very starting point, it must have a starting point here, zero. 
you can imagine it like a stock. This is very similar to a stock. When the stock opens first time on the stock exchange market, usually it comes with a certain price. So it would jump at or the starting point of the offering, uh, they call the IPO, the initial public offering price would be a set price. And starting from there, it starts to jump up and down. And this is quite nice as well. So, so that's basically the same structure what they do here. They want to have a starting point. And that will be the starting point if the index is zero, that will be then get the value of 100. Else, if it's not zero, then you get the original data minus the index minus one. Why? So if we look through this, let's say the first one would be zero. So it says true is 100 is zero. The second one will be, well, look at the previous one. The previous it would be 100, but imagine then it will be 105. Then the next data point will get from 105 and then it calculates from there. So it picks up where it left off previously, which is quite nice. So I will cover a series on this as well, but this is the most important right now that I cover. And this is just to make sure that you have all of the full, full understanding of this. So I hope this helps you a bit more to clarify. Do not get confused by all these fancy terms and designs that many professional developers use. It's wonderful. It's dry. It's very efficient. But if you're a beginner or if you struggle to figure out because you're really at starting point, use, go back to basics. Always go back to basics and if you want to know the basics and this is why I'm always using here The starting point here you go to the documentation the documentation here And then you go to here to to basically this part here this here is your guideline for everything else You should not go advance if you don't have the basics because what happens now is to understand this and as you can see as well to understand advanced I had to first go back to basics and this is how we learn we have to learn the basics first so you go back to basic and then you continue on this advance. That's why I, I somehow disagree in certain parts with the documentation that they are so going so advanced without going back to basics. All right. So I hope this is clear as well. If it's not clear, let me know as well. Put it in the comment section what I need to maybe specify more specifically. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.